Hi, I wanted to talk a little bit about Chapter 2 today, and I wanted to specifically focus on a section in Chapter 2 about group work and collaboration, also called cooperative learning. I think it's really important to touch on group work because if you're anything like me, you would hear the word groups and panic. When I was in school, the teacher would say, it's time to split up into groups, and I would instinct instinctively just slump down in my chair and wish I could vanish. I didn't like working in groups. I didn't like to be judged by my peers. I always thought my ideas are going to be worse than everybody else's. People are going to be making fun of me, They're, you know, or they're not going to pull their share, and I'm going to do everything by myself. So why can't I work by myself in the first place? That was my suggestion. But we do have to teach our children to work in groups, regardless of how they feel about it initially. It's very important to learn leadership skills and communication is crucial. And when children grow and they become part of the workforce, they're out in the world, these skills that you learn from doing group works are absolutely priceless skills. Um, I wanted to touch on the fact that people are now using technology in groups in school. And that is an amazing asset that they just did not use when I was younger. I think that it is fantastic that one child in a group who is artistically inclined can open up a laptop and start making phenomenal designs and posters and playing with fonts and doing graphics. And another child that is just an apt writer can sit and record on their phone things, ideas that they want to make sure they cover and then later play that back, that recording back for themselves and then type up whatever it is that they had going on in the classroom they may have forgotten about by the time they got home. And I think that it's fantastic that yet another person in the group could be a great speaker, a great presentation artist, but terrified to stand up in person in front of someone so they can sit in the privacy of their home and record what it is that they want to say over a podcast. And there's, there's a little bit of a disconnection there which can make a child feel more comfortable. So all in all, there's several different ways to use technology in a classroom. And all of them are sort of geared towards breaking that ice, breaking down the anxiety, breaking down the fears and the phobias that we have of being judged, sitting with people who we don't know very well. And we can really give our students the opportunity to shine and to share the amazing talents that they already have that's rooted in technology they can put all of these skills together and make phenomenal projects. I think it's fantastic that all of these kids will be able to sit down in a group in a classroom and research the exact same thing and come up with four or five different views on the same thing they're researching. So this gives our children an opportunity to learn more than what's right in front of them. They will learn from the person sitting next to them. They will learn from multiple different websites. They will learn from multiple different articles written by scholars. And it's phenomenal that we can use technology in the classroom today for group projects. Whereas when I was a kid, it really was a, a pencil and a paper. Someone would doodle, someone would be kind of looking out the window, and one person would be like, all right guys, so who's in charge? Nobody really knew who was in charge. Now it is designed and geared that everybody is in charge, everybody has a very important role, and you just pick your strength and you go with your strength. So I think that that is really crucial to touch on when we talk about group projects. And for educators, specifically if I haven't sold you on the idea of using technology in your groups, I just want to say it's crucial for you to use technology when you do groups with kids because you also will be learning and expanding on the things you already know. You can design lesson plans online. You can come up with creative little videos and even if the kids are sitting there laughing at the silly faces you're making or the fact that you are messing up your intended script, they are paying full attention to you. They are visually stimulated, they are auditorily stimulated, and there is just no asset available to you like being able to keep a kid's attention in the way technology can do today. So for both students and educators, technology and group work is an amazing, amazing tool that we can use now. So don't be afraid of it. Get out there, grab an iPad, tell the kids they can pull their cell phones out and watch and see how much more excited they are and how much more invested they are going to be learning how to do all these new and exciting things on their technology that they already understand, their comfort zone. Thanks for listening.